Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. In the headlines this week, a strange new species of dinosaur with weirdly long hands has been discovered in Mexico, the reason that scratching an itch feels so good has been revealed, the ingredients for life have been found on an asteroid and much more. Our top story this week is the very exciting discovery of a new species of dinosaur from Mexico. Found in rocks dating to the late Cretaceous period about 72 and a half million years ago, it's a new kind of ornithomimosaur dinosaur, the group of so-called bird mimic dinosaurs that include famous species such as Gallimimus. It's been named Mexidracon longimanus, meaning Mexican dragon with a long hand in reference to the peculiar elongation of this dinosaur's finger bones. The metacarpals, that is the bones of the hand, are extremely long in proportion to the other bones of the body, which is an unusual feature not seen in any other ornithomimosaur. As well as a hand, Mexidracon is known from various fossilized vertebrae, parts of the hips, and bits of the hind limbs. It's only the second ornithomimosaur to be described from this particular geologic formation in Mexico, adding to the known diversity of these dinosaurs at this time and place. In addition, it expands our knowledge of the anatomical variability among the ornithomimosaurs. The paleontologists hypothesized that the long hands could have been used in helping to gather vegetation to feed on, so sort of like a sloth, or the giant and very unusual ornithomimosaur Dinochirus. Interestingly, Mexidracon also seems to have leg bone proportions indicating limited suitability for running, which of course the ornithomimosaurs are generally well known for doing. On the other hand, a currently undescribed ornithomimosaur from the same Mexican formation does seem to be a runner, so it's a possible indication of dividing resources in a shared ecosystem. So lots of fascinating things have been found out about this remarkable new dinosaur species. A second new dinosaur species has been named this week too. It's a new kind of sauropodomorph dinosaur, an early relative of the famous long-necked sauropods. It's been uncovered in early Jurassic aged rocks in southwestern China, dating to between about 199 to 191 million years ago. It's been assigned to a genus of sauropodomorph that was originally named back in 2017, Jingzhua Long but it's a new species which they've called Jingzhuolong Yuorum. It's known from a rather beautifully preserved, almost complete skeleton, missing the forelimbs, neck, skull, and end of the tail. This amazing looking three-dimensional preservation reveals many unique anatomical characteristics that allow paleontologists to recognize it as a new species, and also reveals that the hip anatomy is closer to later, more advanced sauropod dinosaurs rather than other early sauropodomorphs. So this suggests that the early evolution of this lineage was quite complex. A fascinating new species. Also in the recent paleontology news, a study was published announcing that traces of original collagen proteins have been detected in a dinosaur fossil. This fossil is an exceptionally well-preserved hip bone from an Edmontosaurus, a hadrosaur or duckbill dinosaur uncovered in the 68 to 66 million year old Hell Creek formation of North America. Specifically, this fossil is from South Dakota. Advanced mass spectrometry, as well as other techniques, were all used to corroborate each other and revealed that the fossilized bone indeed contains some preserved collagen, ruling out the possibility of its contamination by modern sources. Previous papers reporting on potential collagen in fossils have been controversial due to the possibility of contamination. But this new study now adds more support to these reports also being of ancient collagen. It's a fascinating study seeming to confirm the very exciting prospect that some original biomolecules in exceptional circumstances might persist in fossilized bones as old as the Cretaceous period. In other news, a study published in Nature and Nature Astronomy has detailed some of what's been analyzed so far from the samples brought back to Earth of the asteroid Bennu. NASA's OSIRIS-REx spacecraft launched in 2016, collected samples from the asteroid in 2020, and successfully delivered them back to Earth in 2023 ready to be analyzed by scientists. Delivering the samples back in such a controlled environment is very important for studying the composition of the asteroid material without it being contaminated by exposure to Earth's environment. The findings published this week include an abundant amount of ammonia and large amounts of organic material. This can all give us clues to help us understand what our early solar system was like, but also may have clues about how life started on Earth and how it might begin on other bodies as well. The idea that material deposited by asteroids on Earth could have been key for kickstarting life 
is not entirely new, but this new study supports it with the material that has been uncovered from the Bennu sample. 14 of the 20 amino acids that life on Earth uses were found in this 121.6 gram sample, and all of the five nucleobases found in DNA and RNA. This study is hopefully just the first that will uncover more about NASA's Bennu sample and perhaps about our own history. Weirdly enough, we've got some more asteroid news this week as an asteroid called YR4 has been rated as level three on the Torino Hazard Impact Scale, as it has a chance of hitting Earth in 2032. Now, before you panic and shout apocalypse, this chance is currently very small just 1.6%. It can be a bit difficult for scientists to accurately tell whether or not certain asteroids are going to hit Earth, so it is being officially monitored by the UN until it can be said for sure that YR4 will not hit us. This isn't the first time something like this has happened at all. For example, in 2004, the asteroid Apophis was given a 2.7% chance of hitting Earth in 2029, but it has since been confirmed that it will pass us by. An interesting insight though are the tireless efforts by international planetary defense teams that keep an eye out for any dangerous threats to our world. In recent conservation news, an important study has just been published that performed a global meta-analysis of genetic diversity across various kingdoms of life, examining how this diversity has changed over more than three decades, from 1985 to 2019. This is a landmark study providing the most comprehensive analysis of within population genetic diversity so far undertaken, as the researchers looked at data from 628 species of animals, plants, fungi, and other forms of life. The results show that two thirds of the populations analyzed are being impacted by genetic diversity loss, and that these losses are occurring over spans of time suggesting that human activities are responsible. However, the study also shows that conservation efforts focusing on improving environmental conditions and increasing population growth rates, as well as introducing new individuals of the same species to a population, can slow down and even stop this genetic erosion. As one of the researchers says, there is no getting around the fact that biodiversity is declining at unprecedented rates across the globe. But there are glimmers of hope. The action of conservationists is reversing these losses and helping to create genetically diverse populations that can better meet the challenges of the future. Also in the news, British scientists are using satellite technology to determine the density of Antarctic krill in the Southern Ocean. Krill are shrimp-like creatures that grow to around two inches or six centimeters long and are an essential part of the Antarctic food chain. These tiny creatures feed on phytoplankton and in turn are fed upon by whales, seals, penguins, and other birds such as the albatross. They are also important in the process of carbon sequestration. However, this essential food source is under threat due to climate change, with warmer ocean temperatures changing ice conditions that impact their breeding and feeding. Overfishing is also a big issue. They are commercially fished, among other things, for nutrient supplements and fish meal. Their conservation and management are of vital importance. Scientists have now discovered that there are subtle shifts in the color of seawater with and without krill, and using this, they can gather large-scale satellite data on the density of krill in the water. This data will help inform scientists and policymakers to effectively manage krill, upon which so many organisms depend, and so help protect this precious and unique ecosystem. In other news, a new study has revealed why scratching an itch feels so good. Almost all animals scratch their skin, and it turns out that this action actually activates an immune response that can help to protect the skin from infections. Experiments were done with mice that were caused to have itchy ears, with some mice being allowed to scratch, while others were given a cone of shame, stopping them from scratching. A third group were also bioengineered, so that they didn't feel the itch at all. In the mice that could scratch, they observed pain-sensing neurons releasing a particular molecule, which in turn activated a type of white blood cell called mast cells. The mast cells then attracted another kind of white blood cell called neutrophils, which increased the inflammation of the scratched area. The researchers also discovered that scratching has antibacterial effects, since the scratching mice were less likely to have a type of dangerous bacterium on their ears than those that did not scratch. So this could explain why scratching has a pleasurable effect, as it enhances your bacterial defenses. A remarkable study, and I'm so sorry if this story has made you very itchy. I know I could not stop scratching while writing this. Really? Well, that's it for the news this week. I really hope you enjoyed learning about everything that's happened in these last seven days of science. 
By the way, if you're a fan of science and cool notebooks, then be sure to check out the amazing designs by Atoms to Astronauts and use our affiliate link in the description below to get 10% off. You can follow 7 Days of Science on Instagram and TikTok and also be sure to support us on Patreon if you enjoy what we do here. On our Patreon, you can gain access to bonus content including our discussions on our favourite science stories of the past month. To give you a taste of what we get up to over there, we'll be making the January monthly discussion public on the 7 Dos channel. As always, a big thank you to our patrons including Andrew Kawam, Clara Middleton, Drov Srivastava, Gabriella, Gary Arrington, Giotist, Corey Peterson, Lena Rose, Matt Grandis, Mendicant Fryer, Mike Pace, Monitor Man, Ralph Balzac, Robert Thomas, Sammy Voss, Staniforth Hopkins, Timothy N. Tedrow, and Troy Schmidt. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.